Spirit of Stone leading the way. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Um, it's a pretty strange dinner to come to when you have to cook your own food, isn't it? But that's what's happening tonight. We've got a little um, challenge figured out for you in the kitchen. Um, this is actually our office above the restaurant and a little test kitchen back here that we've turned into um, a Top Chef Junior uh, challenge tonight. So, yes. Um, well, what I love is that we're going to give you guys an opportunity to see what these young chefs do. And keep in mind, they're 9 to 14, and when people watch this, I think with the beauty of production and obviously the Magical Elves, they make it look so, I don't want to say easy, but you're about to really see what the grind is all about. And you're about to really see a different side of Curtis Stone. And apparently, <laughs> I'm making the sauce, so I'm about to also see that uh -huh. side. Yes. Which is very fun for all of us. So welcome, come on in. <laughs> come on. The sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe you all are in um, teams of two. Yes. So, oh, teams of two. Yes, that's why I'm over here. You have a, a, a friend. So grab a station, which is just a cutting board. We are going to cook some fabulous food yeah. downstairs. Uh, but like Vanessa said, we wanted you to feel exactly how the contestants feel. Show up, Larry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's always someone that works for me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to cook the perfect steak, and then Vanessa's going to show you how to cook the perfect company. Great. Do you want to just jump your in? <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got a few ideas. There's like a compound butter. We we'll put on your little um, cheat sheet here. Compound butter, maybe an emulsion sauce like a pesto or a chimichurri. If you want to get crazy, you can make a bernaise or a bouillon or something else to accompany the steak. And then Vanessa and I are going to come around and judge everybody. Um, and you'll be judged on how well your steak's cooked and how delicious your accompaniment is. Derek's floating around. This is Derek. Who, um, Hi, Derek. Hi, Derek. He's here to give you a hand if you need it. Hey. Uh, if, you, if you ask for too much help, marks will be taken off. Um, you're allowed to drink as much champagne as you like while you're up here, but we don't have very good insurance, so please don't touch us um, We don't say that's the kids, but... Um, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the season? Um, you guys, first of all, season two... I, I just want to go back to Emmy-nominated season one. Yeah. So we are so excited to show you guys season two. These young chefs, they came ready. And when I say ready, I mean their chefing skills with their personalities. So we want to see a little bit of that today. No, we don't judge you on it, but maybe it's it, it comes out of the food. I mean, Does? Chris always says he can feel stress in the food. This dish feels stressed. You guys were panicking. He can tell it how it's plated, how it's cooked, how it's prepared. If you're having a good time, you have a glass of champagne, learn from the master. You guys are getting this class. They don't even offer this on eBay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a personal course. Babe, can you pay attention? I'm so sorry. I just <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, they asked if they could come tonight. I'm like, will we get to learn how to grill a steak with my Curtis Stone? And they said, well, maybe. And I said, yes, they will be here. So um, we did a lot of master classes this year. This a lot of in the first season and we really wanted people at home to take away something that they can do in their own kitchen because a lot of times when you watch these cooking shows I feel like it's very it's intangible you can't relate you're like what is that I'm never going to make that I don't even know how to say that um I didn't know what a push was in season one that's the big thing you looked up you guys probably know that. <laughs> so all I can say is have fun let it express out in your food you can't really mess it up all you can do is learn some Cool techniques and ask us anything you guys want. That's what we're here for. All right, so this is, this is how you grow the perfect steak. Right? It gets uh, tempered for a minute so it's not, uh, not super cold. You season it on both sides evenly, salt and pepper. If you want to season evenly, you need to hold your finger a little higher so it drops. If you're down here, you get it, it ends up uh, in sort of clumps. Right, so salt and pepper. Something we found out about the, the young chefs was their taste buds. Salt, more salt. When you're boiling pasta, you want that salt water so salty. Right. right. So see, what I'm doing now, 
is just rendering down a little of that fat. So you can see it's got a nice amount of fat on the outside of that steak. So you actually stand it up, you colour that fat, you caramelise it, which brings a little bit of the natural um, sweetness out in the, uh, in the protein. How hot is your pan? It's nice and hot. <laughs> then you drop it down so you can see you've got a little colour on, uh, on the fat, which is delicious. The thing about cooking a steak is you want to cook it quickly, but you also want to cook it slowly, which I know makes no sense. <laughs> but when you have a thin steak like this, you need to get the heat into it to give it the colour, right? Because that caramelisation is essential. But you also don't want to penetrate the protein too fast with the heat. So what you do is you rest it while you're cooking it. Okay, so you, has everyone heard of resting a uh, steak? Right, so you rest it once it comes off the um, pan or off the grill. Uh, and the reason is because of a thing called carryover cooking, right? So if you think about what's happening to the steak right now, the heat's coming from underneath, right? So that heat's traveling through that, the, the protein. Now if I turn it, what happens is the heat's now come in again from the same spot to the other side of the steak. But what's happening here is even though there's no heat source there, the heat continues to travel through. So the protein's continuing to cook. Now, that carryover cooking, we call it, is how you get a beautifully rested steak. You know you go to a steakhouse and sometimes it's grey on the outside or red in the middle. And sometimes it's perfectly pink. Well, the people who put grey on the outside and red in the middle have made a great mistake. <laughs> they didn't rest it. You're not all the exhaust on. <laughs> Alright, so right, now what you do is you remove the pan from the heat and you allow the steak to rest. So you will repeat this a couple of times until it's um, perfectly medium red. Is anyone here to say steak well done? Good. <laughs> medium well? I used to until I started. And I understand why now. No, you're not allowed to. Um, so we let that rest for about a minute. I should put that over there so we don't smoke. There's exhaust fans here, by the way. You guys have been cooking more on that side. Um, so while we let that rest, we're going to bring it back and give it another 60 seconds on each side until we get that perfect colour on the outside of the, the pig centre. I promise you all that have a cook and perfect steak after today. Um, which gives us time to make your delicious cup. Yay! What, what do you think? Like a pesto? Is that sort of what you have in mind? Absolutely. I thought so. So this is, um, this is called a moron pestle. Okay. I made guacamole in it. Okay, good. That's a different machine. That looks good. That's a good one. Um, what, what we'll do with this is uh, basil, garlic, and a little salt. Uh, some pine nuts. Come on, Derek. You can do a chimichurri. It's the same sort of sauce. It's, um, parsley, maybe a little oregano. Thank you. Oh, sorry. This is fresh protein. You can make an arugula pesto. Well, you can tell when she's smiling. We had one of our young chefs, because um, you know they have a time crunch, and I won't say which one because it makes it a great part of the show. But he mistake, he just took a zucchini, a cucumber for a zucchini. Right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was a big mistake. But to live and learn, right? Okay, so what am I doing? So throw that in. Yes. A handful of, um, let's use pistachios. Okay. We try as we go, right? A little garlic. Straight to your hand. Okay. There's a little sip there, by the way, guys, if everyone wants to wash, but that's what I wash before we start. I promise. Um, so now you start working it. Bump and grind, mate. Work it. Yeah, in there. Work it. Then you need. Okay, boy. <laughs> <laughs> a little lemon juice. Oh, that smell. There's nothing that beats fresh herbs. Whenever you can make a recipe with fresh as opposed to dry, I would always, always, always go fresh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rob Plant once said, oh, squeeze my mouth. <laughs> Tell the juice. Did you say that? We have the whole band, obviously. Little pounds of cheese. Smells good, right? Wow. 
some extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> Take it easy because it will splash. Okay. So when do I stop? I mean, if you Once it looks like a sauce. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an emulsion, right? So that sort of grinding of that ba basil, basil uh, you're releasing all those natural oils, um, which is what you can smell. Like this. If you let the, if you let the sort of, you know how that sort of just drops down, see, so you can kind of just pound it. I can do this, I didn't want to mess up your
and drop the disc on right at the end. Um, that would that would work. So, so I tasted it. <laughs> I tasted you though, you guys. If you think it needs a little more salt, put it in. If you think it needs a little more basil, put it in. A little more uh, lemon, put it in. Because that's one of the biggest things we ask them. Do you guys taste this? They're like, well, I tasted that, but not that. We're like, this is how your guest is going to eat it. So you have to taste it. Because you'll know. It looks fabulous. It's quite a stiff pesto. Right? As opposed to the sauce. Yeah, which is good. So we'll for now. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Delicious. Um, Alright, so if you really want to know how your steak's cooked, if you put your thumb on your first finger and feel this part of your hand, right? That's red. Next one is medium red. The next finger is medium well, and the last finger is well done. See how the texture changes? Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that, well, that's right. Sure. <laughs> so, so, like, as a rule of thumb, if you feel in the state, you're know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to just you use your hands, you know, food. Um, steak ready and we are doing so well this is my pesto we are ready to take on top chef junior vanessa just came over to help me and curtis stone basically just laughed in my face but we are doing this we're counting us down oh my god my partner and i oh, i think we, we did this. this right we did this technically did gerald this. did most of this oh. but yeah we can be on top chef junior um absolutely we're young enough for it right yeah Five, three two the chefs are going around taste testing everyone's dish right now and I know we're gonna Oh my gosh, they're taking they're tasting our dish. Uh she made the really zesty peppery pesto. The steak uh is a wine reduction. Garlic, yeah, a garlic and um red wine uh, reduction. Yeah, a wine reduction with some of those very tasty heirloom tomatoes. Did you cook it with the wine reduction? Uh after, yes, and then poured it on top right at the end. No, moment of truth. Oh jeez. Moment of truth. Oh, Did I cook it too long? We'll find out. Uh oh. <laughs> did a pretty good job, right? I hope. I think. We did good, right? What's that reaction? No. Oh, They're faking it. They're like, yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. okay. And okay. garlic. The sauce is aggressively. Uh, oh no. No, it's, it's just it's a raw. It wasn't cooked garlic. long enough. Oh. Oh. In the pesto. Oh, okay. The sauce is great. The sauce actually, if it wasn't for the sauce, the pesto would be way too much. 
Okay. okay. I, think okay. I think it's the pepper and the garlic in the sauce. It's just like a little, right? That's what gives it that kick at the end. But that's at the end. I mean, when you taste yeah. this, there's a nice balance going on there. Yeah. Next time, maybe just a little less pepper. A little, little less pepper. Less okay. okay. So we were grain till the end. It's delicious. <laughs> that's oh, that's a great steak. You guys are making it really hot for us, actually. You'll be very proud of yourself. Well done. Yay. Good job. Thank right. you, judges. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that is a pretty good steak. It's a really good steak. But like, probably the best I've ever made because we got a great demonstration right before him. Right. Mm. Amazing. We can cook. Okay. Your very first quick fire challenge. Yeah. I mean, honestly, this is like the top of the scale, and this is the bottom. You were all definitely like hovering in a, in a safe place. Nobody burned their steak, and nobody was so raw that it was still moving. So this was a good, good, successful day. It's not always like that. We, it is, and everybody played it, which is even more successful. And we had a lot of interesting side accompaniment. We did. Um, Some a little heavy on the garlic. <laughs> it's hard to, I guess, delicious. order that garlic. Normally we don't do a top and bottom um, on Top Chef Junior because we like to keep it very positive for the young chefs. But we give some constructive criticism and then we announce our tops. But for today we're going to make an exception apparently for my husband. <laughs> But by the way, can you please redo that again so that I can get off dinner duty? You know that Nick is never, and this is not a bad thing, he's never cooked for me because I love to cook and he loves to clean. And this Mother's Day was the first time he cooked for me. And he made me everything I love. So we had bacon, we had biscuits and gravy, we had um, cinnamon rolls, we had to we had everything. And he did it and it was awesome. But baby, I go home to tonight, so I am the real I didn't know that you had dessert here, sugar. <laughs> so, um, so, Curtis, obviously, this is his forte, and he um, he ha wants to tell you his favorites. How about the top, our top? Well, no, I am going to tell you my least favorite. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, it which is, it's, it's rather funny, because it comes from the producers of Top <laughs> Chef. <laughs> top Chef Masters, Top, top Chef Rules, and of course Top Chef Junior. <laughs> you would think after seeing um, thousands upon thousands of cooking, hours they would know how to yeah. come into this but I'm not sure. And there were they, three of them. That's right. They were also cheesy. There were three. That's right. We're very busy behind the camera and <laughs> don't have a lot of time for cooking. <laughs> and now they're going to be even busier looking for a new head judge. <laughs> um, it, it wasn't bad but you're up against some stiff competition so uh, don't worry. Mm. Um, but our favourite for this evening you, they turned a, a walnuts into a great pesto. The steak was deliciously caramelized, but still perfectly pink. Their sauce was definitely something unique that had a really unique taste. Everyone's was was their own individual's, you know, flavor, but this one was something.